Here's why I switched to Firefox, and you should too. Firstly, before we get into the benefits of Firefox, why would you want to switch from Chrome or a Chromium-based browser like Opera or Edge? A lot of browsers are based on Chromium, which is Google's open source version of Chrome, but without a lot of the features. Since billions of people use either Chrome, Chromium, or a Chromium-based browser, Google can exert control over the browser market by making Chromium work differently, forcing a lot of websites and their features to work better with Chromium than with other browsers, since that is what's most used and therefore what developers care more about. Chrome is also a privacy nightmare. It tracks you and collects your personal information to feed you personalized ads and sell your data to other companies and the government. Google is also facing a $5 billion lawsuit for collecting your data in incognito mode. There's also other problems. It's planning to remove support for ad blockers with Manifest V3, but gobbles your RAM, gives pretty slow page load times, and more. Firefox isn't based on another browser like Chromium. Instead, it's independent, built from scratch, and instead of using Chromium's Blink engine, it uses its own Gecko engine. This means that Firefox doesn't contribute to Google's browser monopoly. Both Chrome and Firefox are extremely secure, but Firefox is much more privacy focused with several built-in security and privacy settings like tracker blocking, DNS over HTTPS to hide your traffic from third parties via an encrypted connection, fingerprinting protection, Firefox Monitor, which lets you check if your information has been leaked in a data breach, the ability to enable HTTPS only mode, although I would like to see that enabled by default, total cookie protection, which isolates a website's cookies into a cookie jar, which only that website can access, preventing other websites from reaching into that cookie jar and fetching your data, and much more. Firefox does have some telemetry, but it's not bad telemetry and it can be disabled in the settings. Firefox is also fully free and open source, so you can audit the code for any bugs, vulnerabilities, spyware, etc., and modify and redistribute your copy of Firefox. Firefox has a very simple, beautiful, and intuitive user interface with floating tabs and a more spacious interface, giving it a clean, modern look, and the interface is very simple and easy to understand and navigate. Overall, in my opinion, it looks great and is nice to use. From my experience in testing, Firefox is lightning fast, faster than most other browsers I've tried. Here's some speed tests I did between Chrome and Firefox. First, I tried Wikipedia. Chrome took 2.0 seconds, Firefox took 1.5 seconds. Google. Both browsers took 2.1 seconds. YouTube. Chrome took 4.3 seconds, Firefox took 5.3 seconds. Firefox.com Chrome took 1.6 seconds, Firefox took 1.8 seconds. GitHub Chrome took 4.2 seconds, Firefox took 3.9 seconds. DuckDuckGo Chrome took 4.6 seconds, Firefox took 3.9 seconds. Reddit.
Chrome took 9.9 .9 seconds. Firefox took 7.8 seconds. X. Chrome took 7.8 seconds, Firefox took 1.8 seconds. CNN Chrome took 428 seconds to load up CNN. Firefox took 17.5 seconds. Now let's take a look at some of Firefox's features. Firstly, Firefox has, in my opinion, the best sync features out of any browser. Once you sign into your Mozilla account, all of your bookmarks, history, open tabs, passwords, saved postal addresses, payment methods, add-ons, and settings sync perfectly between Firefox installations. But a great feature is that you can choose what you want or don't want to sync. For example, if you don't want to sync your passwords, payment methods, and saved postal addresses, you can toggle those off specifically. Firefox Sync also has some other interesting features. So firstly, if we go to my iPad over here, you can see that we can uh, see tabs that are open on my desktop and open them here. But also, if we just have a tab here like an article or a video, and we want to send it to, for example, my iPad, we can right click on the tab, and uh, hover over send tab to device and choose the device which would be firefox on ipad and now it will open up automatically and there we go now we have that video or article on the ipad firefox also has some other features like a reader view which removes clutter from a web page making it much cleaner and easier to read there is an in-browser screenshot tool allowing you to take a screenshot of the full web page, a specific portion of it, the portion that is currently visible on the screen, or a specific area. Picture-in-picture -picture mode lets you pop out a video into its own little window that you can drag anywhere, which allows you to control playback and watch your video while you're doing something else. Firefox also has its own add-on store that you can visit at addons.mozilla.org. It has over half a million extensions, including most of the more popular extensions you'd find in the Chrome Web Store, but even a lot of the less popular ones. Mozilla also makes some extensions, or as they're referred to in Firefox, add-ons, like containers, which are a way to organize your tabs, kind of like tab groups, but you can choose between personal, work, banking, shopping, and if you add another extension called Facebook Container, Facebook. The Facebook Container blocks trackers and spyware from Meta. Each container allows you to be logged into a different account on the same website and do things isolated from normal tabs and other containers. Right-click on the new tab button to open a new tab in a container. Firefox has an exclusive service called Pocket, which lets you discover, save, and consume content like articles and websites. I personally don't find Pocket to be very useful, as I'd rather just use regular bookmarks, but some people like it. Firefox Relay creates a proxy email or phone number that you can connect to your main email or number, letting you sign up for new accounts anonymously, and emails or texts will get forwarded to the connected email or number, which people will never actually know. If you ever start getting junk, you can get rid of the proxy and make a new one. 
Mozilla also has its own VPN service called Mozilla VPN. Firefox also has support for some common features you'd find in Chrome, like profiles, which in case you don't know, are basically separate identities for your browser, each with different bookmarks, history, and data. And you can create, delete, and switch between different profiles. While you can use them in Firefox, they aren't currently as easy to use as in Chrome or Chromium-based browsers, but they're there if you want them. Subscribe if you like my content and join the Penguin Byte Discord community with the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.